the hell was that? Anyway, <laughs> hi everybody, welcome back to Marvel in the Madness. I am Stephen Matemba, your host, with my other host Dominic Tor. How are you doing? I'm all right. I've had flu this week. It's been wonderful. Um, Gross. So yeah, now I'm uh, just recovering from that. So if I if I go into a coughing fit, you know why. How about you? How are you doing? Uh, can't really complain. Slight sniffles, but nothing really to hold me down. Slightly dodgy shoulder. Oh, I say I can't complain, and then list a whole lot of complaints. <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic, uh, classic yeah. behaviour. <laughs> yeah, slightly dodgy shoulder, which is annoying. It's feeling a bit better today, so hopefully I'll be able to be back on the gym ground again and just take things a bit more steady. But other than that, just complaining for complaining's sake. For, so for the most part, I'm all right. Good, good, can't complain. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> right, so let's just start off straight in with the weirdness and then we'll get into the other stuff. So um, I'll just read the title because it just sounds funnier. So Pigeon suspected of being Chinese spy released by police in India after eight, after eight months of being detained. So that within itself is just... Madness. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like, oh, we think we have a spy pigeon, so we're going to detain it for eight months. <laughs> Poor pigeon, man. It's just flying about. Because, Well, let me explain a little bit more. So if you go a bit further into the article, it said it had like two rings around it with some paper on it that had Japanese writing on it, apparently. Chinese. So, yeah. yeah. What did I just say? Japanese. But... Uh, faux pas. Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it moving. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so they just decided to, you know, detain the pigeon for that. The, the, the absurd bit is why for that amount of time? Yeah, that is the strange part. Because, they're like, people do use pigeons to communicate. Like, it has been used by spy agencies for that purpose. But surely after eight months, you must have, like, come to a conclusion. Well, I'd say after, like, two weeks of, like, okay... We've taken away whatever lettering was around it. We've checked it's not, I don't know, some sort of cyborg pigeon or something. So after that, I'm like, what else are you keeping it for? A cyborg pigeon. <laughs> well, that's the only way I could like see it. Like if, I don't know, they made like a drone pigeon because this is now in my mind. And I just went off with it. I just thought, yeah, let's just run with it. So like if it was that sort of thing, but just had <laughs> normal pigeon. Yeah, this is weird. Anyway. But like normal pigeon skin, but it's like a drone. Like, okay, fair enough. But after like a week, I'm sure you could be like, it's just a pigeon with some writing on its legs. Once you detach whatever information is, I'm like, you don't need to hold on to the pigeon anymore. It's not uh, like it's going to start, you know, spewing information. And might that might fly back home, might homing beacon back to where it was. Uh... Yeah, but then you can put a tracker on the pigeon and then see where it goes. At least it's then true. you're actually going to get some sort of information. Did you read where it actually came from? Uh, No. It turns yeah, out I'll, it's a I'll... it was a Taiwan racing pigeon. Ah, uh, I think it was Taiwan. Anyway, it was a racing pigeon <laughs> that had got confused and flown across the border. Honestly, I'm sad. Just <laughs> eight months though. <laughs> it's just that's so a, Well, that's all right. I'm I'm going to release a load of uh, trained uh, spy ducks. Yep. I thought mine was weird. <laughs> Can I just release them? Little spy camera on my ducks. Send them around the world. British spy ducks. It's a new thing we're trying. I mean, it's probably not the worst thing in the world. Well, no one would expect a duck, I suppose. Yeah. But I think like they probably have used animals before. Yeah. And then I try to train them. I can't yeah. think of what the article There was one I read a while ago, and I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, well, as I said, they do use pigeons. Like spy agencies yeah. do use pigeons for like communications, <clears throat> but, or have yeah, in the past. I don't know whether they still do. It's not probably no. I'd imagine with modern now, technology, probably not so much. Yeah. But <laughs> everything's just drones now. We're just gonna send a drone. That's true. I mean, we're we're talking about the human kind now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those human drones. Well, I suppose at the end of the day, at least they released the pigeon. But you can't imagine being a police officer in that, like, I should say, prison, uh, in that police force, and you're like, "Oh, I'm, I'm investigating a pigeon." Yeah. So what have you been doing for the last eight months? I was investigating yeah. a pigeon. 
Maybe they thought it was an alien spy for aliens. Maybe. I just think eight months is a long time. Like a week at most will probably suffice, you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> or just put a track on it, send let it do its thing, and then you you know, then you might actually get some good information or at least know where it came from. But no, eight months. I think it's been living in a uh, animal shelter or something, hasn't it, for a while? Yeah, and then they like gave it, and then they released it into the wild. Oh, such a happy ending, cute, cute ending to the story. <laughs> yeah, cute ending. I mean, I, I just feel like it didn't need to happen at all. You just take whatever information was on the piece of paper, decipher, get rid of the pigeon, fix track it to it, send it off, bang, yeah. Done. There we go. We just now. I feel like we should be in their police force. We would have solved the issue. Then we can get onto the real stuff and investigate aliens. I think so. <laughs> well, imagine we are the aliens. Maybe the, we're, we're the ones yeah, that aren't the drones. You see. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Or, or are we the drones for the aliens? Mm-hmm. Not possible. Minus I, I drones. I feel like we. Are aliens, animals are aliens, and then some like weird overlord guy just threw us all on one planet and be like, let them coexist and see what happens. And this is what we've done so far with it. You mean, you mean God? <laughs> yeah, just some <laughs> mighty overseer, <laughs> some weird over- overlord guy. I don't call it weird, they don't call it weird. I say it's some mighty overseer. It's like, <laughs> let me just put a bunch of different species on a planet. And let's see what happens. Sounds interesting. You know what I mean? Maybe we should, we should try it on a mini scale. You probably could with some sort of like a uh, simulator. It's, yeah. one of them. it's fun. What a life we live. I know. It's probably mm-hmm. happening already. We're not even thinking about it. But we, get, we get like annoyed over the smallest things, just like a language barrier, let alone anything else. It is amazing what can trigger annoyance between different people. <laughs> Absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. Anyway, we'll move on before we just go wilder and wilder. So what is the next one you got? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a story this week about uh in the news about um South Korea's um I think it was the health agency <clears throat> have had to issue a warning about eating toothpicks. Now, I don't think these are strictly the sort of toothpicks that we're thinking of, but anyway, they're fried toothpicks that people are trying to eat toothpicks, uh, fried toothpicks, and it's a new TikTok craze. And they're, I can't believe we live in a world where people are having to issue warnings that eating toothpicks isn't good for you. No, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the worst thing. Like, when you sent me the story, I was like, I'm not surprised. <laughs> And it came from TikTok. So, uh, mm, I mean, TikTok probably does have some good uses. It's just overshadowed by the dumbest things. So, whenever I hear something coming from TikTok, nine times I turn, I'm like, yeah, all right. I feel like TikTok should come with a warning of this is how not to do things. Like, oh, 100%. Because people take it as gospel. Like, even sometimes, like, I'm in the gym and, like, oh, I'm like, oh where'd you get information from? Like, TikTok. I'm already like, it oh, might be, it might not be, but yeah, I'm just very skeptical of the first word out of the mouth. It's TikTok. Like, You've got a ten percent chance of it being right. Yeah, well, I have no idea. I haven't got TikTok, so I can't really. Uh, I just call it TikTok. I you know want to get it <laughs> because I feel like I spend way too much uh, on other socials such as uh, Instagram and YouTube. YouTube especially, I probably spend way too much time. So I'm like, I don't really need another one. No, me either. There's, just to probably watch the exact same things, to be honest. Well, yeah, you get the same sort of problems on YouTube. A lot of nonsense in amongst yeah. some good well, stuff. Yeah, no space is really safe. It's just, it's not, YouTube's not really known for doing like massive, or I don't know, maybe they are. But I don't know, I feel like TikTok trends seem to pick up a lot quicker for whatever reason. They're more, they go more global. Short viral more, trends. It's more stupid. But it's probably awesome, because I remember there was like a stage where everyone used to do like really dumb pranks, like, Oh, I'm gonna go to like the most uh hardcore hood and just go annoy people. Like, are you surprised when they shoot at you, idiot? Yeah. Um, so both both aren't good, but I just it's like it's TikTok's more short, quick, so it just spreads quicker. Yeah. But yeah, like like I say, I'm I wasn't surprised. 
Because I've heard That's... of uh, flavored toothpicks, which I like. Weird, people like to chew stuff, but I'm not going to judge you. But to fry toothpick sounds even more bizarre. I think they're made of like potato or cornstarch or something. <clears throat> Sweet potato or cornstarch. So they probably are like, they're made of edible products effectively. But there's something mm. in them that they said if you eat too much of it, it could be harmful to you as well. So, yeah, I'm, basically, they're just saying we don't really know. Toothpicks weren't designed to be eaten. So we're not really sure what's going to happen by you all eating these toothpicks. So uh, maybe don't. Well, it's kind of in the name toothpick, you know. Yes, yeah, it's not toothpick. <laughs> eat it. Because even worse, we say edible toothpick or flavored toothpick. Was, even then, I'm just like, did that really need to be a thing? Yeah, no. Oh, I, well, so why would you want to eat something that you're picking your teeth with? Mm. You're trying to get the stuff out of your teeth. You're not trying to then swallow it into your belly. Well, I feel like sometimes I give too people too much like for granted. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we all and again each of their own. I'll probably do some dumb things too that just aren't recorded. So I'm have to, I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, we we live in a gener we live in a generation that uh, didn't record as many things. Yeah, I'm kind of glad. I'm so glad because that would be an outrageous. Yeah, there's a lot of dumb things I've done over the years. I still do. I just don't record it yeah. as much. <laughs> I don't <laughs> record it and go. You know what I'm going to do? That dumb thing. Go on YouTube. Maybe this video, maybe this video, but <laughs> oh, I was saying, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably looking back in 10 years, but like, eh, maybe that wasn't the one, you know. But <laughs> right now, I'm like, yeah, it's something to do on a Sunday, keeps me out of trouble, so why not look back at some of the things you said? I'm like, what the f were you saying? Oh, yeah, no, but I think it'll be interesting because it'll be like some weird sort of time capsule, so maybe you go back a year and you go back on similar topics. I'm like, do I still feel the same? Well, it might be interesting. Chances are probably weird. I'll be like, oh, maybe weird that I even read that topic. There are, there are some strange topics we've discussed on this uh, podcast. And um, yet I still want to get weirder. <laughs> yeah. You don't know enough tin hat stuff for you. No, because I was thinking like we should delve into some of the stuff like, uh, you ever heard of uh, the MK Ultra, so like the mind control conspiracies? Um, Vaguely. Yeah, so that's like something I'd like to deep dive into because I think those sort of things are amazing and probably still happening to this day again, just not reported on. Oh, there's all sorts of theories out there. No, but that was not theory, that was actually proven. Uh -huh. There was documents released and everything. Uh -huh. Americans should be doing some crazy thing. I mean, the British probably do it as well, they're just not dumb enough to post it or let legal things slip. I don't know. Yeah. I think governments be governments. It doesn't really matter if they're American, British, etc., etc. They all oh, <clears throat> no governments are generally that good in terms of yeah. Not, like when we look around the world, we we pretend to be the good guys, which you know, maybe we have some better better morals or better ethics than some. But some of the stuff that the Western nations have done around the world is truly terrible, <clears throat> especially mm. in the past and still is to this day. Well, it always makes me laugh going off on a slightly weird tangent when I'm like, if you go to like the British Museum, I'm like, none of that stuff's yours. You're just claiming really cool stuff. Like, we're just going to showcase really cool stuff. It's not ours. <laughs> Pretend it's ours. <laughs> and then get upset when people ask for it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, hey, you know a lot of stuff. Like, it's ours now. It's, it's ours. Fine. It's not even fine as keepers. We just came over, took it. What are you going to do? <laughs> but if, if you've got any for ours, give it all back. Quick. <laughs> yeah. We want, in fact, we want more of that stuff that's ours. Yeah. <laughs> Give us yeah. more of our stuff when you're not having your stuff back. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's just little moments like that where I'm like, look at the world. I'm like, yeah, everything is a little crazy. No one's, you know, 100% good or bad. There's, there's a nice mix in between. It's a, yeah, there's, there's some bad, some good, some terrible. And, mm. yeah, I, I don't think many countries have the moral high ground in the world. If we're entirely honest, <clears throat> yeah. but well, any time there's like money involved, there's always going to be an agenda. So, well, and also most countries yeah. looking out for their own, well, their own that, first yeah. and foremost. So, but maybe to bring it back to aliens and weird, crazy stuff, maybe if the aliens come down, that's sort of like the day we hopefully we all just unite and be like, you know, we're all just people, we all just want to survive and just you know be okay. You know someone's going to do a deal with the aliens. 
Probably. Someone will want to be number one uh, number one human in the world, so I'll do a deal to be ruler. Sub, all sub, the humans. Sub, <laughs> sub ruler. I'll be sub ruler of the humans. Oh, gosh. It wouldn't be me. That sounds way too exhausting. Oh, no. I I have trouble just managing my own self. Never mind. Yeah. I'm trying to. I was like, I just about do okay, so I couldn't imagine running a whole continent. <laughs> <laughs> trying to coax, trying to coax the entire Earth into doing what I want. Oh dear. So yeah, aliens, if you're listening, don't come talk to me. I'm all right. Yeah, Leave not me. me. <laughs> can we can we just live in peace? I just Unless wanna... like you want to give me like really cool superpowers, then let's not shout. <laughs> can you just let me sit with my koi and just be happy in my little corner? Uh, don't interrupt my coy and you can do what you want hmm. <laughs> global right. domination I'm fine right. well, does, as long as it doesn't affect me no I'm kidding I, I, no I couldn't do it couldn't do it oh yeah it'd be fun for a bit though <laughs> <laughs> uh, who knows Maybe there's a tyrant within me. Who knows? You definitely, you definitely want a puppet ruler to rule in your stead, though. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. There's gonna be a lot of hate. Oh no! Do if I was to do it, I'd do it from the shadows. It'll be like, um, I'm. Yeah, you've seen the Iron Man three film. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. This is um, what's the character's name? The Mandarin as like a shadow, but he's actually doing that stuff. That's if I was to do it, just give myself away now. But you wouldn't even know because it never really happened. But if I was to do it, that would be the way. There you go. <laughs> it's a steep. <laughs> it is. It is. Blimey. Anywho, uh, <laughs> let's move on to something else, shall we? Uh, yeah. So one of my favorite sports is back. Well, internationally, anyway. Uh, Six Nations. I hadn't had a chance to watch all the games. I was just watching some highlights before we um, started doing this podcast. But yeah, I'm just happy uh, rugby at an international level is back again. Because I, I don't know, I kind of struggled to watch it at a domestic level. I just don't find it as entertaining or I'm not drawn to it as much. Whereas that, like more international, I'm happy. It's, it's, I feel like there's more stakes. And there is. Obviously. It's also less frequent like, if you don't have yes. time to commit to like domestic. Which is, mm-hmm. it is hard to have the time to do it all the time. <laughs> but yeah, the first three matches were all entertaining in their own ways. Mm. Mm. Kicked off by Ireland and France. The guy, what, the French guy, uh, Villelmson, I think his name was, deciding, I'm going to get yellow carded for a high tackle. Promptly comes back on and decides to thump someone else with a high tackle and get himself red carded. Absolutely brilliant. Be consistent, you know? He was. I think he probably only made two tackles and they were both high. It was uh, quite incredible. But uh, he, he looked dis- very disappointed himself when he went off, to be fair, which I don't think he's a, I don't think he's a dirty player. I think he just got a bit excited. No, it's just you're in the heat of the moment. It's the first game. You want to do well for your country and unfortunately that's what you do and now you miss, I think it's two games, which is even worse because there's not really that many games when you think about it. So to miss mm. two no. is quite a lot. Yeah, and obviously they're missing Dupont and a, a few. The French, I think, were missing quite a few of their key players. They did. Yes. They certainly looked a bit rudderless. So, uh, but they they did all right. Ireland played well, but I don't I don't think we know how well they played because France were not brilliant. Um, yeah, I was watching the highlights. I wasn't. I was impressed, but I wasn't overly impressed. So I was like, yeah. No, they were okay. Not I don't think they did anything amazing. Right. <laughs> and then what was it? Um, what was the other game? England, Italy. England, Italy. That was actually a good watch. I got to see the, a bit of the first half while I was at work, and I was like, oh, this could be entertaining. Yeah. And it was first half, to be honest. Italy, if they'd have been attacking a bit more like they did in the first half, in the second half, I think England's mm. defence stepped up a bit in the second half, to be fair. <clears throat> but it was a it was a good match. Italy made a bit more of a game of it. I don't think it was quite as high quality as probably some of the others, but... Or certainly the World Cup games, but it was it was an entertaining yeah. game. And that was going to be like my next point. I think obviously some of the teams are still uh, was well not recovering. There's a bit of it, but still in that psychological command state because obviously France and Ireland made it quite deep into it, so that's still going to be on your mind. Yeah, and obviously <laughs> England came top three, which mm. 
They didn't deserve to, but they, uh, by the, the nature of their draw, they got there. Oh, well, I'm about to say, I don't know if they didn't deserve. If you have an easy draw, you have an easy draw. Yeah, I just mean they weren't the, they weren't the top three side at the World Cup. Is it? Maybe not, but when push came to shove, they, they pushed it after really hard. Yeah, that, you also played terrible that game, so that helps. That, yes, yes, we did. It was no, to be fair, it wasn't well, it is that we played terrible, but it, like the whole formation was just trash to begin with. And then, like, Mike, if I can see this and I have no sort of rugby coaching experience, I'm like, mm, yeah, I feel like you should be able to see that. Yeah, well, anyway, it, anyway, it happened. We, we won, at least we won, so <laughs> indeed, you did, indeed, you did. no, but it was, a, it was an exciting game. And to be fair to some of the England guys, some of the new guys, they played really well. So, one of the new mm. guys got you know, Ethan Roots, I think his name was, got like man of the match, and so. It was good. It was good. The the new guys were probably some of our better players on the pitch. Um, well, they need that time to shine. Yeah. Since a lot of people are either injured or just taking a little bit of time out. That's it. That's it. So that was good. And then the final match, Scotland versus Wales, was one of the bizarrest matches I've watched in a long time. <clears throat> it's the one I didn't get to watch all the way through, but I watched the first two minutes. It looked very entertaining. It certainly is. The the fact that uh, Scotland were at one point, were 20 nil up at half time and looked like they were cruising and were mm. then 27 nil up. And I thought, I was just about to think, I think if another try goes in, I thought to myself, I'll turn it off because it's just getting too one sided. <laughs> at which point, Wales went, Oh, we're going to score a try. Oh, Wales has scored. At least it's not going to be too one sided. Oh, they scored again. Oh, they scored again and again. <laughs> 26-27, and the game finished 26-27. What a, what a crazy, crazy turnaround, really. Yeah. <clears throat> so you couldn't ask for a better start to uh, a week of rugby, could you? No. Like, all the games were entertaining in their own way. So it'd be interesting to see. I don't know. I'm assuming that it's on again this weekend. So. Yeah, I think they do the first two and then have a break. Yeah. I could be wrong. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it should be quite entertaining, I hope. Mm, I'm looking forward to it. And then to go on also, well, still staying with the news. Uh, I'm not sure if you watch Formula 1 or not, but something I find quite intriguing. So by the end of this year, Lewis Hamilton will leave Mercedes and then now it's going to go to Ferrari, which is yes. going to be interesting. Because the last two years, they've been up there, they're still being scoring the points and everything, but the cars have been probably the most inconsistent. That was quite an interesting move by him. So obviously for him, he's going for like the last title, so title number eight to be better than uh Michael Schumacher. So he and he's just doing everything in his power just to secure it. So I can't really fault him, but it's so it's a it's a weird, yeah, it's just such an odd one. Yeah, it's just strange. I wonder if he'd have retired. You know, if he'd have won that one that everyone thinks he should have won. Oh, Abby I think Dabby. so. Because then you feel like, oh, you've done enough. You you know, you've given everything to the sport. You've done enough. Because the only place that ideally would have made sense, but of course, also see why I didn't go there, would be Red Bull. But obviously, he doesn't want to play second fiddle to um, Max Verstappen. That that would never happen. No. But they have got the quickest car. Well, Max has got the quickest car. His teammate, <laughs> Perez. For whatever reason, they should have had the same car, but it's literally night and day. Strange. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting call for him, but I hope it's successful. Yeah, I'm sure you will be. I'm I sure just he hope he gets it, you know, then he can retire and just live his life as one of the best. Ride right off into the night. Yeah. And then enjoy his life. Trip. Yeah, so with all that said, I think we've done enough waffling. Certainly have. I think we'll bring it to a close. Goodbye. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I've been Stephen Matembu with Dominic Tour. <laughs> have a good week. Goodbye. Have a good week. <laughs>